the Earth became a home for many creatures throughout its history. For millions of years, different animals inhabited our planet, but for various reasons, some of them became extinct. Creatures like the woolly mammoths, the American cave lion, the dodo bird and the Tasmanian tiger are well known by numerous people. However, there are lots of other creatures that are less discussed but deserve your attention as well. The first creature on the list is the cape lion, a majestic predator that vanished in the blink of an eye. This animal used to inhabit what is now called South Africa, earning its name from the Cape province where it was first discovered in 1840 by English naturalist Charles Smith. In his notes, the cape lion was described as a very large variety of lion with a black mane extending beyond the shoulders and a fringe of black hair under the belly with a gold fringe bordering the face. A male lion supposedly weighed up to 600 pounds or 270 kilograms, while an average other lion species weighed between 420 pounds to 550 pounds or between 190 to 250 kilograms. It made him the world's second heaviest and largest lion after the Barbary lion, which lived in North Africa and became extinct in the 20th century. Cape lions primarily hunted large ungulates such as antelopes, zebras, giraffes and buffaloes. They were also known to prey on the donkeys and cattle owned by the European settlers. According to witnesses, man-eating cape lions were typically older lions with poor dental health. Cape lions were large enough to intimidate and prey on elephants. Often these lions were solitary wanderers, either cast out or chosen to live outside of pride. The cape lion wasn't the only subspecies inhabiting the Karoo plains of South Africa, but its precise range remains unclear. Its primary habitat was Cape Province, particularly around Cape Town. The last known cape lion in the province was killed in 1858. In 1876, Czech explorer Emil Holub acquired a young lion that died two years later. The largest recorded cape lion was sighted in Hector Sprout, South Africa. This male, which weighed 690 pounds or 312 kilograms, was a man-eater and was ultimately hunted down in 1836. The cape lion was the largest of the South African lions and its skull averaged at least an inch longer than any equatorial species, despite being relatively narrow. The cape lion vanished quickly after contact with Europeans, making it unlikely that habitat destruction significantly contributed to its extinction. Dutch and English settlers, hunters and sportsmen primarily drove it to extinction by hunting. Additionally, the advancement of civilization wiped out its primary food source, the once west game herds. One of the final wild lions was slain in the Cape province in 1858. In an effort to rescue the shrinking populations, humans placed them in captivity. However, within a few years, all the lines perished from exhaustion. The last confirmed photo of the Cape Line was taken in Paris in 1860, featuring a weary line behind bars. This is how the world remembered such a formidable predator. Although the line is called the King of Beasts, it's only the second largest cat on the planet after the tiger. However, not in the case of such little predator which is called the Bali tiger. It is the second creature in our list and simultaneously the smallest tiger on the earth to ever exist. This animal used to inhabit a tiny Indonesian island, the size of which is a bit larger than Rhode Island in the United States. Indonesia is unique among countries with tiger populations as it is the only place where tigers have evolved on islands. They became isolated on Bali shortly shortly after the sea level rose following the last ice age around 10,000 years ago. The Bali tiger was the apex predator of the local forests, playing a key role in maintaining the balance of other species on the island. They were known to prey on monkeys, javarusa deer, wild boar, Indian moonjack, red junglefowl, 
and wild cow. However, with the Dutch colonization, things began to change. They were not only hunted by the Europeans, but also were pushed to the island's mountainous areas. Their natural habitat was destroyed as the colonizers began to deforest Bali Island to make way for palm plantations and irrigated rice fields along with cleansing the place for the colonial settlements. The Bali tiger was the smallest of all tiger subspecies, comparable in size to a mountain lion or leopard. Their head-to-tail lengths ranged from 1.9 meters to 2.3 meters, and male tigers weighed between 90 to 100 kilograms. In contrast, the Siberian tiger's head-to-tail lengths can reach up to 2.7 to 3.6 meters, and males weighed between 180 to 315 kilograms. Unlike lions, the tigers don't have a permanent couple and they don't live in a family group. After a pregnancy that lasts at an average of 103 days, females gave birth to two or three tiger cubs weighing from 0.9 kg to 1.3 kg. Young tigers remained with their mom for up to two years. The Dutch hunted these tigers for over 300 years until they were completely extirpated and their habitats were converted for farming and settlements. The last confirmed sighting of a Bali tiger was an adult female shot in West Bali in September 1937. While rumors of sighting persisted until the 1970s, this couldn't be confirmed. The Bali tiger was officially declared extinct in 2008. Third on our list is the Tulash wallaby. This creature is a small to medium-sized macropod native to Australia and New Guinea. It belongs to the same taxonomic family as kangaroos. However, kangaroos represents the four largest species within the family. The Tulash wallaby, also known as the Grace wallaby, was built to be swift, speedy and agile. But this wasn't enough to escape man's detrimental impact on its population. Less than 100 years years ago, this Aussie animal went extinct. The Tulash wallaby was once common across west expanses of southeastern Australia and southwestern Victoria, where it was first discovered in 1846. Its distribution was much wider in the late Pleistocene area around 14,000 to 20,000 years ago, with fossils found in northwestern Tasmania, Hunter Island, Kangaroo Island and the Mount Hamilton Lava Cave in Victoria. These wallabies thrived in seasonally wet flatlands with dense grasses. Their ideal habitat was the dense, tall, sage land and grass community that developed on the clay soils of plains situated between dune ridges. Like the western brush wallaby, tulashes had stark black markings throughout their coats. The most defining one was a black stripe that stretched from the snout to ear, the forearms, feet, tails and ear tips were also black. According to those around to observe it, the Tulash wallaby was the most graceful and elegant wallaby or kangaroo species. Males had a head-to-tail length of up to 1.5 meters and the females head-to-tail length reached to 1.4 meters. The Tulash wallaby decline and eventual extinction resulted from a combination of threats. Habitat destruction was a major factor. Swamps, essential to its habitat were cleared, eliminating much of the necessary vegetation. The introduction of predators like the European red fox also contributed to the species decline. Furthermore, the wallaby was hunted for sport and for its pelt. The Tulash wallaby survived for just 85 years following European occupation. In the 1920s, efforts were made to conserve the species by capturing and breeding the last known members in captivity. However, this this plan disastrously failed when 10 out of 14 died of exhaustion and shock from the pursuit. The last recorded wild sightings were in 1924, with the last known Tulash wallaby surviving captivity until 1939. The species is presumed extinct, although research continues in response to suspected sightings reported through the 1970s. However, no confirmed sightings have occurred since then. The fourth creature on our list is the 
Atlas Bear. It not only battled Roman gladiators, Barbary lions and tigers, but was also the only native bear in Africa that survived to the modern times. Named after the Atlas Mountains spanning modern-day Morocco, Tunisia and Algeria, the bear was brought to the attention of scientists and researchers by an English serviceman in 1840. The Atlas Bear was unique among bear species. Its outer color was primarily brownish-black, while its underparts were reddish-orange. Unlike other bears, it lacked a white mark on its muzzle. This subspecies was stockier and sturdier than the American black bear, albeit with shorter claws and muzzle. Their fur lengths ranged between 3 and 5 inches. The Atlas bear's origin remains unclear, as genetic studies haven't found any substantial links to any brown bear. However, a weak yet significant mitochondrial DNA link to the polar bear has been identified. In 1844, Swiss naturalist Heinrich Rudolf Schnitz classified the Atlas bear as a subspecies of Ursus arctos. Sometimes it's listed as a distinct species Ursus crotheri. For the most part, the Atlas bear was herbivores, consuming nuts, roots, acorns, etc. However, they were also known to consume meat, including small mammals and carrion. Their reproduction was similar to that of modern-day brown bears. The mother would give birth to two to three hairless, toothless and blind cubs. These cubs fed on their mother's milk until spring or early summer, during which time they gained enough weight to accompany their mother on strolls within her territory. Cubs typically stayed with their mother until they were two to four years old. During this time they learned essential skills like defense and hunting. The atlas bear's decline was due to various factors, including environmental changes, habitat loss, which expanded the desert, and overhunting by the local tribes. The introduction of modern firearms, making them easier to kill, played a significant role in their dwindling numbers. The Roman Empire also contributed to the bear's downfall. Like other wild species, the Romans hunted and captured thousands of the Atlas bears for use in their brutal fightings. The last known specimen was probably killed by hunters in the 1870s in the Teuton Mountains in the far north of the Reef Mountains of Morocco. It was a gradual disappearance rather than a sudden extinction, which distinguishes it from all other creatures on the list. However, the fifth animal, the Caribbean monk seal, became the symbol of the age of discovery. Christopher Columbus discovered it on his voyage to America in 1492 and called it the Sea Wolf. When Columbus first saw the seals on the Caribbean islands, the beaches were full of them. They used to inhabit all the Caribbean and the coasts of Mexico and Florida. While the Caribbean people also hunted them, they only took what they needed, allowing the seal population to thrive. Caribbean monk seals were carnivores, finding most most of their meals was in the coral reefs. They ate anything from crabs and lobsters to small fish, eels, squid and octopus. For the most part, they were benthic feeders, meaning they did most of their hunting on the seafloor. Caribbean monk seals had a large, long and robust body, growing up to 2.4 meters or 8 feet in length, and weighing between 170 to 270 kilograms, or between 375 to 600 pounds. Males were slightly larger than females, similar to Mediterranean monk seals. The species had a distinctive head and face, featuring a rounded head with a broad muzzle. Their faces had large, wide-spaced eyes, upward-opening nostrils, and large whisker pods with long, light-colored smooth whiskers. Compared to their bodies, their fore flippers were relatively short with small claws, and their hind flippers were slender. Their fur was brownish and grayish, with the underside lighter than the dorsal 
dorsal area. Adult seals were darker than the paler, yellowish younger ones. Caribbean monk seals often had algae growing on their fur, giving them a slightly greenish appearance similar to Hawaiian monk seals. Historical records indicate that these species may have gathered in large social groups of 20 to 40 animals, and sometimes up to 100 individuals at resting areas on land throughout its range. This creature was highly social. It was known for its gentle and curious nature, making it especially vulnerable to humans. However, it turned out to be a terrible catastrophe for them. Two main factors triggered the final extinction of the Caribbean monk seal. The most apparent was the relentless hunting in the 18th and 19th centuries to obtain the oil held within their blubber. High demand for seal products led to the slaughter of hundreds of seals. Their docile nature and lack of fear towards humans made them easy targets. The second factor was overfishing, which depleted the reefs that sustained the seal population. Unable to find enough fish or mollusks to eat, the seals either starved or failed to reproduce. Despite their dire situation, little was done to save them. By the time they were listed as endangered in 1967, they were likely already extinct. The last confirmed sighting came in 1952 at the Serranilla Bank, which falls between Nicaragua and Jamaica, where a small colony was known to live. Undoubtedly, their extinction was a direct result of human interference. In 2008, after unsuccessful five-year search, the United States declared the Caribbean monk seal extinct. Unconfirmed sightings of Caribbean monk seals by local fishermen and divers are relatively common in Haiti and Jamaica, but two recent scientific expeditions failed to find any sign of this animal. Five different creatures with unique and amazing stories serve as the reminder that humanity should care more about nature and not let other creatures become extinct, like the ones showcased in this list. Remember that all of these animals became extinct because of the humans.